a lot of people ask me, a lot of my students ask me, what's, what's the proper practice technique? What do, you, what do you focus on when you practice? Well, everybody, everyone's different, first of all, and everybody has different goals. The one thing that you need to have when you sit down to play the guitar is a goal. And, and my suggestion is make it a real simple goal and stick to one idea at a time because you really need to make it sink in and it's, it's more than likely going to take repetition. It's going to be more than one time. You do it again, you do it again, different days, different times until it's automatic. So the one thing that I stress on my students is to warm up. And you need to tell your hands and your brain, okay, we're going to play the guitar now. And one thing I've been using over the years, I, I came up with, and this came out of working with Howard Roberts, what I call quadraphonic fingering. And um, I call them the quads for short. And the quads, a couple things about technique is keeping your fingers down. There's, there's 24 fingering orders, and I'll just sit there and... Simply one, two, three, four. I might do one, three, two, four. Yes, I'm keeping my fingers down. I'm not going. Too much motion going on. It's like it's like it takes too long. So I'm keeping as many fingers down as I can. Other things, picking. There's four ways to pick. All down. All up making the upstrokes to sound like the downstrokes I'm making them I want to make them the same volume so when I'm alternating I don't, and that's the next thing is down up down up I'm not going I'm hearing that a lot you want it all even the next one is up down up down and well, why would you practice that well what happens is the story, I, had a, I have a story about that. I, I, a fellow friend of mine, great musician, called me a couple of years ago and he said, Mitch, I want to take picking lessons from you. And I said, why? And he said, well, I saw you play last night and you started some of your phrases with an upstroke. And my answer was, I did? <laughs> so I didn't know. It's just from practicing. When I practice, I do that. So what's actually happening and... You might gather I don't like to think too much. I've, been, I've mentioned that in some other videos. And I don't. I like to play, not think. And practicing starting with an upstroke first, my brain figures it out. You may think you're playing spontaneous when you're soloing. You're not. You're working it out a split second before you play. You know what you're going to play. When I figure out what I'm going to play, my brain has figured out this sequence of notes and says, we need to start with an upstroke. So I'm not thinking about it. I'm just doing it. So I had to tell him, I said, listen, just practice starting with an upstroke, up, down, up, down, instead of always down, up, down, up, and it'll happen. And, and I said, you don't need to take lessons from me. And off, off we went. Okay. The next thing is, um, there's a, there's a, th the thought wave, I think, in practicing is that you've got to spend hours and hours and hours playing scales. <laughs> Just play, play, play those scales over and over. If you find, A, your mind wandering, okay, you could play whatever it is. You could be learning a song. You could be working on a chord progression. Whatever it is, when you start noodling, and then you start doing that, and stop. Go do something else. Because what, 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 your, what your body, what your brain's telling me, I, I had enough. I'm saturated. And, and then you're going to get into the, into the position of diminishing returns. You're going to keep banging out, trying to bang. I got to practice. I got to practice for 45 minutes and I've only practiced for 37. I got I to keep going. No, you don't. Stop. Go do something else. Relax. Do something else. Do you have to practice three hours in sequence a day? No. Practice 15 minutes can be enough time to really focus on one goal and really dive into it and really learn it and keep working on that until it's just second nature to you. Then go on to the next thing. Our, our brains 
are meant to do really do one thing at a time. When you start saturating your practice time, well, now I'll do this, now I'll do this, now I'll do that. When you're done, you really haven't done anything because nothing's changed. Then the other thing I hear is my fingers go wherever they want. I don't buy that for a second. You think your fingers can do anything without your brain telling them where to go? Uh -uh. So I don't buy that. It's like your brain's telling your fingers. If your fingers are going where they go, you're not doing anything. You're just, you're just wasting your time. So the main thing is you need to have a goal. You need to stick to the goal. If you start, your mind starts to wander, you're thinking about, oh, it's almost time for lunch, whatever it is, I'm thirsty. Well, go have lunch. Go get a drink of water. Whatever it is, get away from it. And maybe go back to it later in the day or tomorrow. Don't think, you'd, you. well, i got to practice so much time, and if I don't that, do that, I'm not going to succeed. Not the case. Pace yourself and understand how you learn. Everybody learns differently. So what works for one person may not necessarily work for somebody else. Find what works for you. Okay? So this is Mitch Holder saying, I'll see you soon and keep playing.